Do I look like James Bond or what? Joe Biden. <laughs> wow. All right, that's a low blow, bro. In the past, Houdinki has brought us the best watch video of all time. Now, let's see if they've done that again. What do you think, Johnny? Is this going to be the best watch video of all time? I mean, on paper. On paper, this is genuinely the best watch video ever. However, Houdinki fell a wee bit off track, brought out this incredible video, which has nearly a million views, and then they brought out this ridiculously Ben Clymer episode 2. What is wrong with their thumbnails, mate? Like, do they not have a team of people that understands YouTube a wee bit? That's not good enough. Houdinki does need a wee bit of help because they're missing a whole f point here. A million views in a week, though, isn't half bad. A million views in a week is something that we have not done before. So I'm really happy to see that. However, I'm just a wee bit concerned. I thought that this was the re-erection. Re-erection. Re <laughs> Resurrection. <laughs> I'm genuinely hoping that this is the resurrection. Is that the right word? Yeah. 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 Resurrection of Houdinki. But then I saw their thumbnails here for their other videos and I'm like, bunch of amateurs, come on now. Anyway, today I'm reacting to Talking Watches with John Mayer and Ed Sheeran. I haven't watched this video yet, so I do not know what to expect. Is this gonna be the best watch video of all time? Ed Sheeran, let me ask you another question. Here's Sorry. But just one point, 5208, that's a minute repeater. Sorry, sorry, I just wanted to say that. That is a f***ing masterpiece. If you could get any watch brand tattooed on you. Oh my God, you know, weirdly, I was thinking about this the other day, aside from watch brands. Sorry, I'm not gonna pause it every five seconds, by the way. Well, it seems you're doing that, so. No, no, I promise. We're gonna play it out, it's gonna be a relaxed video, but I just have two points that absolutely blew my mind. The two in a watch on your wrist, kind of weird. <laughs> and I saw a Roger Smith watch. That's kind of like, when I was getting my first round of tattoos, I almost got a watch tattooed here. Almost. <laughs> and like, I'm known for my terrible tattoos. I know this. Terrible. Well, I mean, some of them are a bit weird. But uh, but yeah, I almost got a watch what tattooed. What watch would you have gotten It tattooed? was that. I almost got that tattooed. Would, would it have been photo real portrait? I don't know. It would have been f dreadful, but... Um... <laughs> Can we skip that intro, yeah? That's a long ass intro. For those who wanna know why and how John Mayer all constantly gets on this show, basically Houdinki is this company, right? That started as a magazine or started as a blog. John Mayer's a shareholder and every time when a company is doing shit, John Mayer comes in and saves the company. And now he asks his mate to join him saving the company. I am John Mayer, former interviewee of Talking Watches, now moving to the other side of your screen. And I am overjoyed and excited to interview one of my favorite people, one of my favorite musicians, and one of my favorite collectors, Ed Sheeran. Welcome to Talking Watches. Nice to be here. We've been lucky enough to cross paths in New York City at the famous Hit Factory. It sees us in the studio today, not making music this time, but going through some of Ed's brilliant collection. Me seeing that tutor actually breaks my heart because I had the opportunity to buy that watch for 15K pounds. I believe Ed Sheeran asked Tudor to make 60 or 70 of these pieces to celebrate his Divide tour. He gave that watch to all his staff that was helping him on the tour. They the engraved ones? Yeah, they were engraved and it had Divide on the dial like you see here. I have seen two or three on the market. There was once one offered for 15K and I refused it and I still regret it today. What are they worth? Ah, swapping hands between 30, 40, maybe 50K. It's crazy, like, and I would love to have one. So if you have a Divide Ed Sheeran Tudor Black Bay, I would love to have one. Reach out to the team at prideandpinion.com. Even if you want to sell a different watch as well, by the way. That was a- Or buy one. Or buy one. That was a shameless plug. So these are like some from the start, some from the middle, and some really, really recent ones. But yeah, it's like more of a an overview. Yeah. Let That's a bunch of clocks on a table. That is fantastic. Let's start with the watch that was your entree into wearing a watch and all that that feels like in when you're younger and... Yeah, it was this one, it's called a toy watch. I don't know if they make them anymore. It was basically, I bought it with my friend Jamal, who had one. Mercedes hands, a bit of a rip off from Rolex, but it is still a toy watch. <laughs> what? That is what it is. I mean, it was an expensive watch to me at the time. It was like 80 quid and it was, you know, I'd been doing gigs and I'd shot a like live DVD at a place called The Bedford and I think I'd gone out to celebrate afterwards and bought that. And uh, yeah, that was like, 
that was all I wore for up until like my second tour. What's the next watch you see that you go, huh? Do you know, it was, uh, I was out in a place called Marbella in Spain. We were around a lot of guys that were wearing like rose gold offshores mm -hmm. and rose gold big bangs. And that was like, and I remember seeing them and being like, I never even knew that watches could, I knew like, these kind of watches, G-Shocks, Casios, uh, Swatches, and then Rolex. And then I saw all these watches around and I was like, what are these? And they were like, oh, this is a AP or this is a Hublot or whatever. And so that was when I was like, oh, maybe that's, if I'm gonna get a watch, something like that. So it's not a Rolex in your face. Yes. Like everyone knows what a Rolex is. So. Especially when you're coming up and you're playing music and you're just in that beginning phase of introducing yourself to the world. I had the first, real sort of mechanical watch that I bought was an Explorer 2. And I hadn't even played on national television yet. And I remember my manager, I was playing Conan O'Brien, and my manager in the green room said, take that watch off, please wear something different. Yeah. Because you're so early in your career to be wearing a Rolex, it doesn't send. And is that why you lent into IWC then? Because it was just a bit more. It wasn't for that reason. It, uh, but I remember I wore his G-Shock on the very first appearance. I'm just really getting to the point here, but is he stating here? Don't wear a Rolex because everyone knows what Rolex is. Wear an IWC because it's sh people don't know or what's the crack but it doesn't make sense because the rolex explorer was his first real mechanical watch so that was his first real mechanical watch iwc is also a mechanical watch at that time it was rolexes are for people who are from this whole other walk of life and it's erudite and it's upper crust and you can't be wearing a rolex yeah. with, with a hoodie playing music when you're introducing yourself to the world and maybe he was right but as we figured out, you actually really can go on stage. I think it's budget. very much changed as well. Like when I first started buying watches and I would say to my accountants, like I would love to buy this watch every single time. And they were like, oh. that's right. Okay. Whereas now it's like, I read an article on you where they said John Mayer has blown half his fortune on watches. CNBC <laughs> did an article that says John Mayer blew a quarter or a third of his earnings on watches. And that, very outlet would go on to write stories about the incredible investment potential of watches and how everyone should take a look at it in their portfolio. And I went, do you want to delete that story yet? Watches as investments, watches are often seen as investments, but approach carefully, treat with care, know what you're buying. Certain pieces indeed increase in value, but it's got to do with three factors. Is there demand? How rare is the watch? What is the availability of a watch? If it misses one of these three points, the watch will never increase in value. Give you a quick example. There's extremely rare watches out there, watches you've never heard of, Air Lion, Air Giant, but there's no demand demand for them. These watches on paper could go for 30, 40, 50,000 points. But in reality, it only goes for a couple of grand, even cheaper, because there is no demand. A vintage Daytona is extremely rare. It's even more rare to find now, f*** it. Uh, an incredible perpetual... <laughs> <laughs> the new Google Pixel 8 at Curry's. No, I don't want a Google Pixel. Climate tree. I want to sort of gauge the intrinsic sentimental value of this watch for you. Would you trade this watch to keep this watch? Honestly, I would trade every watch in this table for that watch. Oh, I get it. Every man. watch, like That's that one, and especially the guy that I bought that with passed away last year. I see. And so that means a hell of a lot more to me, like even now, like obviously it's my first watch, but even now that's like, I would trade everything for that. Everything I would, I would, cr I would cry if I lost that yeah, watch. Yeah, that's beautiful. And that alone is insight into how collectors see watches, is that this is the most, valuable watch on the table when it comes to the heart and soul and, and uh, I'm glad I asked that question. Yeah. I really am and I get it. Second uh, two actually, the, the second watch, which is, you know, watch nerds find Hublot to be. Who has anything against Hublot? Who? What is he talking about? Why would you have something against Hublot? Like, look at it. Beautiful. It's $10,000. Like, it's not the same as certain other brands, but for Luckily not. Me, that is a great watch. I've worn that on maybe a hundred shows and I love it. But I that's the it. sign of a great collector, right? There's two ways to look at a watch. First way is to look at it and ask yourself, do I like it? Second way, and I think no. I think is the more popular way, unfortunately, is to look at it and then to sort of consult the larger cultural <clears throat> weather report on the watch. Well, it's thunder and wind and it rains like f 
We all made mistakes with our first girlfriend, right? This is his first mechanical watch. I remember, not vividly, but the girl that I was doing the first deed with. I do remember her. She was below average. That's a wee bit with a first watch, right? You need to get into it. And then you realize, like John said in the previous video, the first 12 watches that you buy were mistakes. Move on. Don't want to listen to any more bullshit. When you got this, did then you feel like you had arrived? Now you have a mechanical watch. This should be it. Or did you, did this yeah, just well, break actually open? My, the second watch I bought actually was a it was a, a rose gold Big Bang. So it was this one. So the second watch was also a Hublot. I'm not feeling that that is something I really want to cover or look at or watch. It's like how to say this. It's like seeing your ex girlfriend being f uh, in the ass by another lover. Oh, sorry, that was a you've different. You've been hurt by someone. If you do not want to make the same mistake like Ed did, make sure you do not miss out on the next drop of IFL watches this is the new concept by ifl watches the new drop the pepsi the dial is completely hand painted with blue red and white indexes full metal band make sure you do not miss out every ifl drop just sells out completely in one go the watch is limited to 100 pieces so please make sure you do not miss out follow the first link in the description to get yours now this is God tier. And not a mistake, by the way. We'll carry on all the way up until the watch we look at later on, which is a piece unique from AP, which I think has the same. He has a piece unique from AP, right? That is that is worth the wait. Thought process behind it is you saying, I want that to look different. And mm -hmm. that makes you an artist. You look and you go, we should have this and that and that. Not in a way where most people sort of go to message boards or post message board now, but uh, you know, Instagram comments and start saying it should be. I do feel that John is talking a lot. Talking watches with Ed Sheeran hosted by John Mayer. Or is it talking watches with John Mayer hosted by John Mayer with Ed Sheeran? They look at it and go, I don't care what it does to the value of the watch. I would appreciate it more if it looked X, Y, and Z. Yeah, and, and I mean, I've done that with, I, I developed a close relationship with George Bamford like maybe 10 years ago. Didn't know that. Didn't know that. I like the customization side of things. Would um, you still do that now with a Patek knowing sort yeah. of what they're, yeah, you would still take totally, something yeah, and, yeah. and- I know George quite well. He never picks up his phone, but whatever. <laughs> doesn't even pick up. If I'm going to wear it, yeah, I, I had an auto, not, it's, it's a bracelet version of the um, uh, 5726 uh, mm -hmm. that is just... The annual calendar. Just black. It's Nautilus, just... just yeah. The problem is with customization and you can... We bit compare this with putting diamonds on a watch. You do not put diamonds on a watch because that's irreversible. The same is a wee bit with customization. Now you can put your name and initials on a dial and then buy another dial that you can put back on so the watch is back in its original condition. As long as you do that, it's fine. It's a wee bit different with cars because I got a wee bit slated for a car video that stated, ah, oh, you don't do anything aftermarket with a watch why do you do it with a car now let me explain to you that i can put the original parts back on and have the car exactly the way it was when it rolled out of the factory with diamonds you cannot do that so there's a difference with customization of a watch like george bamford is known for how he started with customizing tech hoyers and putting diamonds on like the f idiots do at the diamond district not mentioning any names not mentioning any names i've given them enough clout there's a big difference if you never intend to sell the watch and you want your initials on the dial and patek will not do that for you then this could be a great solution black and i get it with its uh face changed for every album so i get george does me a like a yellow one for subtract that I can then swap out with a red one for equals or a good and it's just something that I just swap in and out. I feel I didn't know that that they had such a strong relationship. George kept that quiet. George kept that one quiet. That is crazy. But I know him quite well. He has a cool channel about F and time. It's actually the watch world is actually a really small place, really. Like it's cool. And I'm hated on every angle of it. Are respectful to being a watch collector and being like these are the classics, but also like sometimes you wanna spray paint your car yeah you know yeah and but i i think that that's fine you can also just wrap it bvn nederlandse televisie wereldwijd what the fuck is there a dutch advertisement on here okay so on this table pick out the one that you think flies most under the radar and is also one of the most important watches what could you still to this day kind of get away with wearing without someone sort of identifying it as... Do you know, some... weird, weirdly, and it is a, there's there's a couple, I mean, there's a Tudor here that, that yes, but this one flies the most under the radar because it just feels, it just looks like a 
watch. Yeah. Even even though it is a like really, it's a piece unique. Um, That's what's interesting about but, it. Tell people about uh, what's unique about this world time. So this, I think, I, I'm, I'm going to say this a few times about watches, about like what's my favorite watch or not. But this, I think, is the coolest watch that I own. I got a couple of piece uniques through Patek and I thought that this would be too much of an ask because I didn't know how they were with like real estate on world times. Mm -hmm. My hometown is called Framlingham. There's about 2,000 people that live there. I grew up there. It's what the song Castle on the Hill is about. And it's just a tiny town. There's not much that goes on there. We've got a kebab shop. We've got like one cafe. We've got, you know, a couple of pubs, but it's, it's not like... Singapore going on there. Or he done something I am trying to do at the moment with another brand. He has a piece unique by Patek Philippe. First of all, that is for the normal human being, not possible. It's not possible for you, not possible for you, not possible for me. You need to be Billy Big Balls, you need to be Ed Sheeran. So what they've done on a world timer, there's 24 cities. They've replaced the home city, which in our case is of course London, with his home Time. Now, I wanted to do exactly the same, but Patek said no. I have a 5231, love that watch very dearly. I would have loved that. They said no. What would you put on that? Belfast, right? Belfast, Belfast. Oh, Belfast. I, Belfast. I would have put yeah, Belfast on. Like so I went and found a different way to get that done. I asked Frederic Ostad to build me a world timer. They're going to put Belfast on there because they thought it was cool. It's not about the brand for me in that case. If it's Patek, if it's Frederic Ostad, if it is your mom, I don't care what brand it is. I would still shag it. Like, I mean, let's be honest. As long as it's Belfast on the Dow. Like, like on the world timer. So I'm, uh, I'm a wee bit annoyed here. No, yeah, not really, it's realistic, it's Ed Sheeran. I love that. I had the same thought process, so I love that. So I asked if they could replace London with Framlingham because that's my home mm -hmm. and wherever I was in the world, I could click it round and I could always see what the time was in Framlingham, basically. I absolutely love the world timers. I'm not a big fan of the 5230. I think it's a nice watch, but I would have rather seen the close on the enamel, the 5231. That's one of the nicest watches ever. It, is, it would hold no value to yeah. anyone else as a unique watch. And there's only one element different, I think, is just that one word. And I actually think if you're Patek Philippe, those are the piece unique requests that you're the most likely to honor when they are two things. Personal. Yeah. Bar when I ask, because then they just say, move on. Get away, gray market dealer. Get away. It's ridiculous. I'm a collector. Obviously so unique to you that it's not going to be thrown out into the market. Uh, yeah, I you can't know? imagine this popping up. On There's only 1,999 other people who have any interest in that watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very limited demographic. I will buy it. Give me the use case for when you would put that watch on. What event, what time of year would you put uh, that watch on? I went to my old high school, did an awards evening where they're handing out like best homework for the year mm -hmm. or whatever. And I was the surprise person giving out the awards. And I, that, the last time I wore this was for that. Last time you wore that? He looks like f 10 years younger here, mate. Patek are really particular as well with it because they were like, it has to be a color uh, scheme that is in no other watch. So they, they give you like a real So that parameter. color in the center is unique This itself. is it, it's complete. There, there will not be one like this. And I really wanted it to be enamel uh, of the, the I, I, I was him gonna to do ask you. Painted enamel of the castle on the hill. I was gonna ask you. Did you ask for that? I did, yeah. You well, get what you're given. He wanted the enamel. That's funny. But Patek said no to him. In a weird way, I'm like, okay, Patek just says no to everyone. Fair enough. So yeah, no, fair play. That would have been amazing, like, to be fair. Well, you know, but sometimes <laughs> if you over ask, did you ever, any of these pieces, did they take, take the full on class photo of the watch and give it to you in the leather portfolio? No, they used to do no, that. no, no. This is genuinely the most outrageous conversation for a normal person. You have no idea how unobtainable everything is on this table and the stuff, what they're talking about. Like, this is just ludicrous. John is talking about photos, like taking photos of watches and leather pouches, but the watches are like, they shouldn't be on his wrist. They should be in a museum. That's how rare it is. It's so unobtainable, but they make it so like it's the most normalest thing in the world. It, it, it gives me mad anxiety, to be honest. Like, I'm like, oh. and like, they're just relaxed about it. What did you do? Did you start the design process? Did you, do you, if you're uh, requesting a piece unique, will you? They're talking about requesting a piece unique from the most difficult brand to ask for a piece unique about. And a get it as well. This is low key f jealousy here. Yourself going to Photoshop and take a watch and change the color and show them. No, I actually, I, I just visited them. I just, I went over and was like, 
I'm just gonna, I think I'd had one piece unique before, and then I was like, I'm just gonna go over and... It's like, I may have had, I think, <laughs> this conversation is just... The reality is here, right? There, different planet, mate. Different planet. They're sitting on the moon. Sit with, meet Thierry, sit yeah. with Thierry, and we had, uh, what do we have? Fondue. And drunk a As hell of a lot of wine. Listen, it's fantastic to listen to hear this. Like, it's amazing. But it's like so far from the reality that it's ridiculous. The most recent piece unique, the most recent one. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Do not put that in. This needs to be a serious video. Right, can I flex my piece unique now? Flex your piece? No, can I flex? <laughs> Come on, now it's time to flex flex with my piece unique, can I? I'm just done with this conversation about f***ing piece unique. There's only one difference here. This one wasn't made for me. I bought it. It's time to bring my piece unique. Is that a Mars bar? <laughs> yeah. Hold on, let me get a wee Right, that's, oh, come on. Mm -hmm. Well, this is also a piece unique. The only difference is with this piece unique is that um, AP didn't make this watch for me. I, I bought this uh, from the person AP made this watch for. So, I have a piece unique, but not made for me. I love this watch though, because it, when I heard of the existence of this watch, it took me about two years to hunt it down. This is a re-edition of the 25th anniversary of the Royal Oak, introduced in 1997. And this watch is 2007, so this is a re-edition of the 25th anniversary. That is extremely special. And what can I say, it's made out of full platinum instead of ceramic, so I would argue to say that this watch is better than his. That was my piece unique and my flex moment. And a watch I think people are going to be excited to see and surprised to see the details of which is uh, your piece unique white ceramic QP. Yeah. And um, when I first saw it, I thought, like the rest of the watch world, it was just a quote unquote panda. I yeah. thought it was a white dial with black subdials, off we go. And I thought, okay, that's a, that's an interesting way to spec a watch, cool. It's cool to see this, right? A lot of people don't know this, but I want to talk about the layout of the watch. The outer wheel is a week. That's a week number. He currently has the watch set on week number 52. Then you see on the left subdial, you see Thursday. Points out the Thursday, these are the weeks of the day. These are the... <laughs> <laughs> These are the days of the week. Then on the right, you see the actual date. On the top, you see if it's a leap year, yes or no. The indication when it actually is a leap year and what actual month it is. We call this a perpetual calendar. As well, there's a functionality of a moon phase, but I have never really seen a uh, moon phase accurately set, to be honest. So that is not really being used. And then when we hung out a couple weeks ago in Atlanta and I put the watch on, I went, Oh, so this is actually exciting because this is the first time people are going to see yeah. a close-up of this dial and see exactly what's going on. So I got Francois to make me a piece unique. For those who don't know, Francois is the CEO of Audemars Piquet. He's leaving the business though, or he may already have left. For the mathematics tour. And I was like, do you think you can do me a white perpetual? And can you imagine going into AP boutique and just saying, listen guys, could you maybe do me a white perpetual calendar and just make it a, uh, for me, I like these colors. Uh, they will literally laugh at you. You want a piece unique? You're not even allowed to get a normal one. And he could just text, ah, can you do me? Ah, yeah, no bother mate. Sent me loads of uh, designs of it. And as it was going through, I was like, it'd be cool to have something that sums up everything. And so I wanted this to be a watch that I could wear forever and remember the last 13 years of my career. Mm. Um, so on the back, it has all of the mathematical symbols. On the then, rotor, which is really cool yeah. to hand engrave a rotor that stays even enough to be an oscillating rotor and have the graphic that you want, which I think is so cool. Nice. To me, when I see an AP with a custom rotor, that means you you know the people in that building. Say what you want, John knows his watch is like... John is f***ing unbelievable. What a proper enthusiast. What a passionate guy. Have you ever had a watch that you said you would baby it was very valuable. This one I'm just gonna sort of keep. And then uh, one night alone in your house, you go, I'm gonna give this to myself. And I'm gonna wear this whenever I want. Or all of these you do like, well, I've seen people rip the seal. I'm gonna give this to myself? You give it to yourself every night. <laughs> Pull the wire off my fellow self, like for fuck's sake. Protect Philippe off with their teeth and throw everything away and just go. So from the very beginning when you I buy I mean, these, that's, that, that's one thing I did at the beginning because I had no idea you were meant to keep watch boxes and papers. I used to have the first Patek I bought, I took everything out of it, chucked the papers away, and I used to keep 
rolling papers and weed in it. <laughs> that's <laughs> that was, but had, great. But I didn't know that you were meant to. <laughs> it was only like later on down the line. I was like, ah, oh, yeah, you probably I probably should have kept them. I have no idea where they that's are. That's but, but but this is what makes. You so pure. It's a great box for rolling papers. The biggest interconnected group of watches on this table are Perpetual Patek Philippe. On this table, what was the first Perpetual? Uh, it was a fifty nine seventy, but it was actually the the deep dive into it came from an article that you guys had written on all the Perpetual calendars that had come out, uh, and I just sort of worked my way backwards, ending yeah. with a, a fifteen yep. eighteen, and was that was very much like I want to collect the collection yeah, of it that's and a it's great run. it's quite it's quite fun. i've got a few uh 5970s though i think they're my favorite out of them he has a few 5970s one percent of the one percent of the one percent of the population that loves watches will never even see or would be able to touch a 5970 and he is a few of them and he talks like it it's like yeah i have a few uh g-shocks and there's levels to this Makes his rollies out of Patek papers. Wow. This is cool. This is cool. Will Ed Sheeran wear a leather strapped watch on stage knowing there will be sweat? Yeah, always. Are, 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 is there sweat in these? I actually got that specially made for the um, 5208. I said, can you do me a rubber line strap for stage? You're the best. 5208. That is the most expensive Patek I have ever sold. Very, very close to a million euros in 2019. Let me see. June 2018. That was when I sold it. Fun story. You and I crossed paths in Tokyo when I was playing at the Budokan, and you had this watch on in the dressing room, and I flipped over it like I just did. And you said, why don't you wear it for the show? And I wore this watch. Didn't I wear yeah, this for the, for the show, performance? Yeah, yeah. So I wore a 5208 that was Ed's. And no one picked up on it as well. I thought it would like no, I, come I, out somewhere. I missed the 5208P. Now we have the 5308, which excites me greatly. And maybe uh, maybe I'll nut up and get that at some point. <laughs> Retail's over a million. Doesn't matter which currency. A rupees is probably 10 trillion, but that's a different story. Well, maybe get that at some point. Now there's one watch on the table that I think people might be familiar with if they've seen you do your solo shows and seen you uh, do your Subtract Sundays. Uh, it is a yellow G-Shock that uh, I'd love you to be the first to explain to people what it is. So you called me, uh, I think it was second day of my tour. Obviously, you've been making with Hadinki these G-Shocks, which I've been wearing a lot as well. I f***ing love them. And you said, I would love to do some with some friends, and I would love for you to be the first friends to do it mm -hmm. with. And I said, great. I mean, my idea was to do my album, and I thought we would go with subtract and this is the 6900 g-shock subtract by Ed Sheeran. and um yeah it's it's like do you know what i find it's very similar to this it's loud it mm -hmm. just it sticks out and that's that is a hell of product placement but he's now going a wee bit over the edge because he's now trying to compare a g-shock with a piece unique perpetual calendar made by Audemars Piquet in ceramic that's why i love wearing these two for the shows this is very much subtract this is very much the mathematics stadium all of my mates who are watch guys have at least one of your G-Shocks. Mm, that's of great. Like, and it's something that is collectible for all collectors. Yes, and and for after talking about these pieces that for most people, to be, let's be honest, are, are unattainable, to give people a watch that is as exciting to you as any of these watches on the table, and they can join and in on the And probably wear as much as, that's right. wear, wear more than most of these that's watches right. on the it, table. Like, product placement done well. I think it's very, very cool, and I think it's cool that G-Shock is doing limited editions with John Mayer. Now, now in this case, with Ed Sheeran, I think that that is really, really cool. I do think that they need to be careful and don't go over the odds. Don't do a second and a third one straight after. Let it sink in. Let it settle. Do you think it's cool? It's f***ing cool. And it shows, again, that Casio is God there. That G-Shock is God there because it fits in every walk of life. What these guys are talking about, the watches that they're talking about, conversations that they're having is not in any way, shape, or form a normal conversation any watch collector or any watch enthusiast will have. I done this with the CEO of this and this and he done this. It is so 
far away from reality is bizarre. But the fact that they can still enjoy a G-Shock in an authentic and a real way is very, very inspiring. And therefore, I'm gonna see if they're still available. And if they are, I'm gonna buy five of them. $185. Holy f yeah, they're still available. That's good. I'm gonna buy five of them and I'm gonna give them away to one of you guys. You need to go to my Instagram, follow me, and like this photo I'm currently taking and just post it. I just posted. Say that you want to win it on that uh, photo. Horrible photo though. A pawn shop, then a jeweler, then a watch collector. I'm really enjoying this video, but it's a wee bit long. It is very long. Like, great to see Udinki back with a great video, that for sure. But, verdict, is this gonna beat the best watch video of all time? Absolutely not a hope in hell. Absolutely no chance. The first ever episode, Ben Clymer done with John Mayer. That really set the tone for 10 years of incredible talking watches. Please keep on doing this. Either Ben, you be the host or John be the host. I always said I'll never review John Mayer's watch collection until I get the opportunity to do this together with him. We want to make this happen for everyone. So please do me a favor, send a message to John Mayer, Twitter, Instagram, OnlyFans, whatever means possible.